Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists dental associates with employment contract issues. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about what is tail insurance for uh, dental malpractice coverage. So this is definitely one thing they usually don't teach you in dental school. Uh, but if you are a dentist, you're going to need malpractice insurance. And there are different types of malpractice insurances uh, that you kind of need to be aware of. And then uh, potentially you may have to uh, pay for. So first, uh, the employer should pay for your annual premium. So the annual premium is just the amount needed to be paid to insure you each year. And that's how it works. It's every year you pay a premium and then you're insured for that year. Um, so there are two common types of uh, malpractice insurance coverage for a dentist. One is occurrence-based coverage and the other is claims made. So in an occurrence-based policy, tail insurance is not necessary. Uh, it just means a policy has to be in effect when the malpractice event occurs. Um, now, the other coverage is called claims made, and in that scenario, tail insurance is necessary because it states that a policy must be in effect when the claim is actually made. So it's possible if you leave an employer, someone could sue you, you know, one or two years later. And if you didn't have a tail policy, you would not be covered, even though it happened, you know, two and a half years ago. So let's kind of dive into the costs of these types of things. So. If you have a claims made policy, which will be the vast majority of um, dental associates will have a claims made policy. After the contract ends, for whatever reason, it's terminated or it just ends and it's not renewed or maybe someone's in breach of contract. But uh, for whatever reason, once the contract terminates, you'll have to get a policy that covers the gap in between your last patient that you see and then the last date that you can be sued. For most states, it's two years. There are some exceptions for when um, people become, uh, you know, they're no longer minors. Um, and, and it's usually from the date you either knew or should have known <clears throat> of the malpractice event. So it's certainly possible that someone may not even know that malpractice occurred in, for a year or two. Uh, and in that scenario, that that's how the dentist can be sued after the fact. So. You'd have to purchase a tail policy. It's also covered uh, called gap insurance or extended reporting, but it's mostly known as tail insurance in the industry. Uh, you would purchase that prior to the end of your current contract, and then it would be for a set amount of time. So you can get a one year tail, two year, five year unlimited. Uh, obviously, the, the longer the tail, the more expensive it is. But most policies will cover somewhere between three to five years because people figure that's pretty, that's far off enough uh, to cover any kind of claim that could be made. Now, uh, as far as cost goes, tail is generally about twice what your annual premium is. So if your annual premium is, let's just say it's 3000 a year, uh, then your tail cost would be around 6000 uh, The shorter you're with the employer, May, maybe all the way down to like 1.5 times what your annual premium is. Whereas uh, if you've been there a very long time and you want an unlimited tail, it could go all the way up to three times what your annual premium is. But a good rule of thumb is it's about twice. So uh, if it was $6,000, you'd have to pay that amount all up front before the contract terminates so that there's policy in place. Um, it's a one-time payment. You don't have to pay it annually. So you just pay the six grand you're covered for as long as the tail, uh, you know, the tail policy lasts. Um, now, who pays for that? Well, it just depends what it says in the employment contract. Uh, many employers will make the dentist pay for their own tail. Uh, it's just a matter to negotiate between you and the employer. Um, one strategy, uh, if the employer is not willing to pay for all of it, you could ask them to kind of make a... It's like a forgiveness per year. So for instance, if you had a three-year initial term, maybe you would say for every year that you're there, the employer would chip in 33% of the tail cost. So if you leave in year, you know, between year two and three, they would pay for two thirds of the tail. And then you pay for thirds. If you're there for three years, they pay for all of it. Uh, it's not prohibitively expensive for a dentist. Now, 
certainly when you get into a more specialized surgical specialties and that type of thing, it's going to be a little bit more than if you're just doing general dentistry. Uh, but it's still something you need to think about and something most dentists have no idea about, at least I find. Uh, if you have any questions about your employment contract or tail insurance, you can give us a call uh, at the phone number listed below in the description, or you can reach us through our website, shellylaw.com. And I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks.